So in this new playlist, I want to explain a new grammar formalism, which is called pluralistic combinatory categorical grammar. And I think it was made, it was first developed in uh, Edinburgh in Scotland by people like uh, Mark Steedman. I mean, it's it it is an old. Uh, grammar formalism, but it was Mark Steedman and his friends and his colleagues that used this formalism uh, and combined it with lambda calculus and, and used log linear models to learn that, to learn the lexicon, and in order to use it for semantic parsing and more practical, more uh, machine learning based problems. And uh, so these are amazing scholars. And so what is combinatory categorical grammar? Well, the, f the, best, the best reference to introduce this topic, I think, is Mark Steedman. CCG is a radically lexicalized theory, radically lexicalized theory of grammar in which all language specific information, including the linear order of heads, arguments, and adjuncts, is specified in the lexicon. So once you know that you do the lack, you know the lexicon. You you we call it super tagging. Or or may you may use bottom up parsing. I don't know. But once you once you learn your lexicon. And so, for example, lexical entries like this, for example, chair could be either this or that. And once you know that, then, then uh, automatically it can, it can generate everything and know which one is left of what, which one is right of what. And, and it's very beautiful in, the, in this sense. In, in contrast to that, my playlist on probabilistic context-free grammar in which we learn every rule. We have to learn which one matches and, and so on. But here, everything is automatic. Everything is... But still, the, still we, can, we, can, we can use... Still, ambiguities will arise because there are different ways to parse to reach a, a given logical form. And so instead, the same language-specific syntax syntactic information is lexicalized via lexical entries. For example, the verb sees, it, is, it means that it needs an NP on the right, and, but it needs an NP3S on the left of that. So these slashes and backslashes means this, this thing. So a slash means we need something on the right, while backslash, it means we need something on the left of that. And so please note that category includes both syntactic type and logical form. I mean, a, a logical form is composed of, a, a category is composed of syntactic type of that. But you may have, for example, a category that has a st uh, uh, two categories which have uh, the same syntactic type but only differ in the logical form. So it's always possible. So when we talk about category, we mean an augmentation of syntactic style and logical form. Otherwise, the definition is imposed. So to take a slightly more complex lexical verb, the following is a category for the subject control verb for a sentence such as he promised her to leave. He promised her to leave. So there are just four rules. It's very simple in contrast to uh, 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 context-free grammar that I explain in a different playlist. Here, CCG is really simple. You just use forward composition, X, Y, Y, Z, X, Z, X, Y, Y, Z, X, Y, X, Z. So you see everything is just uh, is inspired by category. By the way, category theory 
if you are background if you have background in pure mathematics category theory is the mathematics of mathematics and it is it has huge applications in function theory in algebra in in topology in geometry of manifolds in anything that you imagine and here we are talking about natural language processing so you see huge applications so we can think about parsing as a structure prediction. So this Boston here, when we when we say show me flights to Boston, it understand it it converts it to this uh, logical form. So Boston is NP Boston, and then two is PP. It needs an NP on the right of, of, of that. And this is the logical form of 2. Because X, 2, Y. <clears throat> and then we have <coughs> proposition. Uh, but with the logical form. Because we combine uh, 2 and Boston to become this. And you see it's very compositional. It's very easy. And then flights and this. It becomes the bigger constituents and uh, finally mm, the biggest constituent which is this, your sentence your and uh, so it's 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 language to meaning when we, when we say about the thing it means language to meaning and and, se um, and semantic parsing is just this we are converting language to tree but here we are for example using the formalism of lambda calculus you could use other formalism for semantic parsing, such as AMR, discourse representation structure, recursion method, and there are many things, or even naive approaches, I mean, uh, such as semantic role labeling and very naive approaches. So there are a huge number of formalism for semantic parsing, but the one that we are using is lambda calculus. And so in another term, we can, we can say we have two kinds of general uh, grammar that is well known in NLP community. One of them is probabilistic uh, context-free grammar that I've explained in a different playlist. The other one is this new playlist, which is called probabilistic categorical, combinatory categorical grammar, which is this, uh, this playlist that I'm talking. And so we are converting sentence to logical form. If I compare CFG with CCCG, it means this PCCG has, has lots of categories, thousands of categories unlike PCFG that has very few categories, everything, grammar that you know in high school. And so, but PCCG, each of them has its own benefits. But this is, this is radically, radically lexicalized. So it, it's even more, more radical than lexicalized context-free grammar. It is PCCG, it is combinatory categorical grammar. So syntactic bar, you could use CCG for syntactic parsing. Not only for semantic parsing, but also for syntactic parsing. So if you want to do that, then assignment of part of speech and CCG categories to word in a sentence. The process of assigning a CCG category is called super tagging. So when we say super tagging, it means we are in the context of syntactic parsing. And often constitu uh, constitutes a bottleneck of unparsed performance, especially for bottom-up parsing algorithm. So super tagging is done using statistical models, <coughs> such as maximum entropy models, long short LSTM. We use it LSTM. I mean, there are many papers that use LSTM for this super tagging. I will show you the references. And so the combination of categories using combinatory rules. So a standard algorithm for performing is bottom-up CKY chart parsing. We see it everywhere in graph-based approach to parsing. 
So the algorithm it uses a chart, which is a tabular data structure for storing constituents spanning each subsequence of words of a parse sentence. Highest scoring deviation selection is performed according to parsing model, such as perceptron or maximum entropy. So you see, uh, we can also use it for semantic parsing in this slide. In that, we use uh, the, the formalism of lambda calculus here. So we, not only we have, uh, we have some, we have some uh, syntax and then we have some logical form, but this syntax is different. We are using uh, the syntax of CCG combinatory categorical grammar. As I said, when, when there is a slash, it means it needs something on the right of that. When it, when it is something backslash, it means this NP should be, it needs some NP on the left of this. And this is the only thing that you need to know in order to understand CCG. So there are very good articles, but these are very basic articles, very old articles that you should start with before you go to advanced topics in CCG, because CCG is a huge topic. Although it was... Uh, it was heavily understood in Edinburgh and Scotland, but nowadays many people, even outside Scotland, are, are using it. Even in Google, they are using CCG, and but still, it has some challenges. Uh, but and and the challenges are resolved uh, in different forms. So a typical learned lexicon is like this. Flight is word. These are lexicons. So you see for word flight, you see three different, uh, three different logical forms and also, I mean, three different categories. So because we said that these are categories, the combination of syntax and the logical form, we call it category. So we have, for one word, we have three categories. For another word, we have, again, three categories. So I will explain a, a, a technique in the next lecture. You don't need to uh, use all boilerplate codes to, in order to parse, in order to understand and, and learn these lexical things. We use templates the idea of statement. And so we use ten template to compress it because it's very, you see, everything is, is boil applied. Only fly, this predicate is substituted with this one. And even for fair, for example, fair is substituted by this predicate cost. So everything is, is formal. So so you see, you feel that it's it has a template structure. You just need to feel it. So we call, so we, I will explain in the next lecture about lexemes and templates. And those are easier for you to put it in the features of your like linear models in order to learn the lexicons. So traditional CCG grammar includes the following lexicon, as I said. Flight is noun lambda x to flight of x, and so on. Where each lexicon, this word goes to this uh, syntax and this grammar, this uh, logical form h, h is logical form. So you should know what is lexeme. Lexeme is smallest unit of language, which has a meaning, for example, run. And lexicon is different. Lexicon is finite set of lexemes. So your dictionary is lexicon. And lemma is something that, you know, in elementary NLP, it's canonical or basic form that represent lexeme. There are lots of the libraries nowadays in Python, you can use it. So what is case and type raising? So you know sometimes we have some problems in order to justify which one should be combined which with another one. So uh, we we create some kind of flexibility. Um, let's call it uh, some kind of um, redundancy. Yeah, this is a good word, redundancy. That uh, whenever you have a problem. <laughs> you you go and type raise it. So this is a good technique in this CCG, uh, and it's it's very nice because it works. For example, Harry 
the type raising of that. But what what I want to talk about in this introductory lecture is is that this slot linear model that we use it in L and LP in different applications, and here we are using it again. For example, Z is your this Z is your logical form. I mean, the logical form of a sentence, sentence X. So X is your sentence, and what is phi? Phi is your uh, feature, and theta is the parameter. And phi is a feature. Note that it's very interesting. X is your input, and y and z, z are your output. Input, output. So you are using input and its labels in order to generate your feature. And by this, we are creating this probability. And, be, and if we just maximize the likelihood, then we are done. Then we are, we are con we have considered the role of these data data set. And there are many great papers. For example, as I said, for super tagging with LSTM, this is a really good article. They're very simple. They just use LSTM, and you have you classify everything after your good representation of hidden states of LSTM. So so interesting. There is another article called uh, Max Margin Incremental CCG, uh, again by Mark Steedman. So Mark Steedman is everywhere, uh, is one of the pioneers. And uh, of course, Christopher Manning, you know that for several reasons, his great articles. And there are many famous people like Settelmayer. So they use LSTM for CCG parsing. It's, it's an old technique. It's in 2016, but it was even before that because we knew LSTM and we know these things. So it, it could be, so you see, it, it could have been before that. Oh, this article, I've explained it in my playlist. Which playlist? I don't remember. But I've explained this playlist. Maybe the playlist for machine learning ideas. I've explained this article. And uh, a CCG parsing with a super tag factored model. And also, you can use attentive graph convolutional networks. With the, the work of Tian is very important.